Your Blockchain Doctor. MedCredits launch Ethereum telemedicine platform. What if you could get medical advice from a real doctor at any time, anywhere in the world, and through the Ethereum blockchain? What if an expert diagnosis could be had in just minutes and only for around $10? All through your phone. According to Dr. Moshe Praver and his team at MedCredits, this dream will soon become a reality. But how will it work for patients and for doctors? How does this service stack up to other remote medical or telemedicine services like Dr. Phil's Doctor on Demand? Does this service really need to be blockchain powered or have its own token? We ask all these questions and more in this extensive interview with Dr. Praver, Chief Operating Officer of MedCredits. Before we get into the interview, here are some of the basics of how MedCredits when it goes live next year. Users will get tokens to power the app. They then submit their request and pay a fee in MedEx tokens worth around $10. Their request could include pictures or just a text description and possibly more options in later versions of the software. Within a few minutes, a real doctor will give them a medical response. This is then added to the patient's electronic medical record, which is secured on the network with its own private key and only accessible to those the patient allows to access to. The first version of the software called Hippocrates is focused on dermatology, treating skin conditions. Our interview with Dr. Praver, Robert DeVoe, what is the main inspiration for starting MedCredits? Dr. Moshe Praver, as physicians, we witness firsthand the inefficiencies of our healthcare system. Patients have poor access to health care and often cannot afford it. Physicians have progressively seen their practice autonomy diminish and thus and this is causing an epidemic of physician burnout. Blockchain technology gives us new tools to fix these problems. We can now build networks that are truly peer to peer. With that comes the ability for patients and physicians to self-govern and su the supply and demand of healthcare services and control their own healthcare data. Who is your main target audience? Who would you like to see using the platform over the next few years? Is there a set of people that MedCredits is not suitable for? It's tough to limit our target audience because everyone is a patient. This is an open access platform and there is no one it is not suitable for. With that said, we have been strategic in the early days to ensure a robust network. We're taking a bottom-up approach and focusing on patients and physicians rather than larger healthcare institutions. We are building the first truly decentralized registry of physicians. Doctors on the platform will spread the word to their patients and the network should pro propagate itself. According to the introductory video on your site, MedCredits appears to be only for skin diseases. Is that correct? If so, is that just for now or is that the only expected use case of the platform? The Teledermatology DApp Hippocrates is a deliberate go-to market strategy that works within current limitations of Ethereum's infrastructure and still delivers a usable product that will attract physicians and patients to the network. We will most definitely be adding additional services such as family medicine, ophthalmology, and pediatrics. The platform is also open source, meaning that anyone can build apps on the physician registry. What attracted you to Ethereum? Are you concerned about scaling or transaction costs? Did your group consider an alternative platform like Ethereum Classic or Lisk? At this time, Ethereum has the most robust developer tools. We are quite engaged in the Ethereum community and benefit from the rich collaborative environment. Scaling is a huge focus of the foundation and they have some pretty brilliant solutions. Blockchains that claim to be massively scalable right now are either sacrificing decentralization or aren't truly blockchains. Why did your team decide to make this a blockchain based project? Are there any issues your team foresaw could only be or best be handled with a blockchain or Ethereum? Patients and doctors are transacting in a trustless, permissionless environment with the smart contracts governing the rules of these transactions. A blockchain makes this type of peer-to-peer -peer commerce possible. A separate but equally important question is, why does MedCredits need its own token? 
The MedEx token creates a crypto economic model that incentivizes token holders to curate a registry of certified physicians. How does your offering compare with other remote medicine products like Doctor on Demand? What are your main competitive advantages that you have and your competitors might not have? Doctor on Demand is a centralized telemedicine service. It is rent-seeking middleman that no longer is necessary. Offhand, I'm not sure what their fees are, but these companies commonly take 25% of all transaction fees from the doctors. MedCredit eliminates this fee entirely. Furthermore, it creates a global marketplace for telemedicine that matches supply and demand. The result is a approximately $10 evaluation that arrives within minutes. Doctor on Demand simply cannot compete with this and sustain their business model. Authors note, we checked into the pricing model for Doctor on Demand and their fees range from $75 to $229 per use. What happens if someone sends a picture to a doctor on your platform and the doctor has no idea what it is or otherwise can't give a diagnosis? Is the patient still charged? Uh, telemedicine is very useful as a triage service. Over 90% of the time, a patient will receive a diagnosis and will have saved time and money. In some cases, a patient may need to be seen in person by a dermatologist for a diagnosis to be made. For these cases, we will have physician referral service connected, connect the patient to a local dermatologist in the MedCredits registry. How will you encourage doctors to accept cryptocurrency? To make the platform user-friendly in the early days, MedCredits may facilitate payment with fiat currencies. How will people get your tokens? Are you concerned that this may add too much friction to the experience and turn potential customers away? What about the need for Ether in order to pay transaction fees for ERC-20 tokens? Tokens will be available for purchase in the token sale or through third-party exchanges. We anticipate that protocols like OX will create frictionless decentralized exchange of ERC-20 tokens, eliminating an additional step. Conclusion, good idea but needs frameworks. Will MedCredits or other telemedicine services be the future or at least part of the future of medical care? The power of cutting out middlemen like insurance companies and hospitals for getting quick medical advice is certainly compelling. The platform will no doubt face a number of difficulties when it comes to the legal framework surrounding medical care in each region of the world. However, with enough funding and effort, almost anything's possible. In any case, our thanks goes out to Dr. Prever for taking the time to speak with us and share some details about the vision behind MedCredits. Does MedCredits sound like something you'd use for your own health care? Tell us why or why not. Oh, I can't remember where this is from, but I'll put it in the comment section. Uh, this is just one more case where the blockchain and artificial intelligence is actually going to, um, I wouldn't say take over, but start uh, impacting medical services. Like you take for, uh, take for instance, skin care or skin diagnosis. From well, I would say... 50% of the time, you can actually use Watson or an AI to actually diagnose a skin problem because they've actually done tests, you know, one-to-one -one tests between a group of uh, highly proficient, experienced doctors with like 10 or 15 years uh, practice and put it up against um, uh, the, the Watson AI. And the Watson came out in some cases ahead and some, uh, some cases slightly behind in diagnosing the, the the problem. So in other words, very seldom uh, does the AI miss. And I'm sure that going forward, if, you know, eventually uh, more and more of the uh, diagnosis is going to be moved to the AI. In fact, I do have, there's another article I don't, I can't remember where it was. I'd have to actually go look it up. I'm not going to include it with this one. I may do it later. But they were actually uh, talking about Watson and the AIs and how close these uh, diagnoses actually are. How, and the AIs are, are, aren't going to get anything but better. So I'm sure just like Uber or Lyft or one of the uh, ride-sharing services, at the beginning they use human beings to actually start the service and actually grow the service, but eventually more and more are going to get automated. Just like 
Uber and Lyft that are going to get next year going to get self-driving cars, a lot of self-driving cars in a lot of cities because of Congress. I do believe this is what Obamacare and these uh, exchanges were actually built for, to actually cut out the middleman, cut out some of the hospitals. Shout out to Mr. Research. Mr. Research did say in one of his videos, you know, and I, I lean to what Mr. Research says because he's one of the few honest experts about medical billing. He said the biggest cost uh, to medical insurance is not the catastrophic illnesses. He said the biggest cost to, to medical insurance is people going into the urgent care and emergency rooms for minor illnesses. So in other words, an emergency care, emergency care cost is like four or $500 you know, per visit. And an urgent care cost is like $200 per visit which you might pay a copay of $20, but 90% of the cost is paid by your insurance. If something like telemedicine, like med credits or doctor on demand can actually do that for $10, $15, $20, maybe even $50, it saves them anywhere from 75 to 90%. And for certain things, for certain diagnoses that aren't emergencies or don't need to be seen by a doctor where it could actually be done uh, remotely. Say there's a machine that actually can examine you remotely, you know, whatever it is. You go in, you put on some each EKG pads and uh, at your local, let's say, drugstore, hook, hook yourself up, call your doctor, pay 10 bucks. Uh, it runs a scan on you. It prints out the scan. Doctor does a diagnosis. He does triage. It says, OK, you just got a cold. If you feel worse, come back just like a doctor would if he's going to spend 10 minutes with you. And 90% uh, of the time, you you know, you give you a diagnosis, you're fine. Just think how much money that would save in the in the medical uh, billing and medical costs and in, in basically hospitals. All the wasted space you see in hospitals. Look at all. You go out to Kaiser, man, or something like Kaiser Permanente here in Los Angeles. Man, you have these temples are basically empty 90% of the time. Or you have people in waiting rooms 90% of the time when you could spread this out to AIs and doctors all over the world. Say where a doctor uh, in in the uh, United States wait, makes, what, two dollars $300,000 a year, and a doctor in India that does basically the same thing makes, what, twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a year? The same thing that happened to telemarketing and and support, customer support or customer representation that happened in the 90, the late 90s, early 2000s, where it got farmed out to Philippines and India and other places. Uh, I think that this is going to be the same thing. And blockchain and Ethereum and, and uh, uh, ideas like this are just going to grow and just going to accelerate. So it's going to hit doctors, nurses, medical billers. Uh, medical insurance, it's going to collapse the middleman, the whole big middle that he's talking about, which is could be like 80% of the cost. What is that going to do for medicine? And then when you get need to get a, a scan or something like that, your insurance can actually find you a slot any place in your city where you actually get a medical scan or see a doctor in person or something like that. It'll, call, it'll take back 80% of the doctor's load. Brave new world. Brave new world. Something to think about. There's just one more thing where technology and AI is going to hit the top and the bottom. Something to think about. But with that, that's all I got for this one. And I got to talk to the ladies later on the Hangout. So I'm going to put this up for you guys to chew on. There's just more logs on the fire, one more brick in the wall. It's coming, folks. It's coming for us, coming faster than you think, and not just for the people at the bottom. Is what it is. But with that, I'm going to jump off of here. This is BGS out, and I'll see you guys on the next one.